Really? You gotta, gotta be, be kidding, kidding me. me. All right, Dad. We've got from our friends over at Alfa Romeo, they're working on a new vehicle. And and the reason I have this is today's really got to be kidding me. The headline reads, Alfa Romeo will make a three-row, 400-mile electric SUV for the U.S. due out in the second half of the decade. The big electric SUV will join an EV, Julia, Stelvio, and mid-size sedan. The reason I have this as today's really got to be kidding me is not necessarily because it's a bad thing that Alfa Romeo is uh, you know doing a foray into electric vehicles. That's a great mm-hmm. thing, actually, if they want to experiment and explore. The really you got to be kidding me is the thing breaks Alfa Romeo's in general, and now they're trying a new powertrain. Would you be caught within, I don't know, a hundred miles of buying an Alfa Romeo EV dead? The really you got to be kidding me here is who the heck's going to be the, the test dummy that buys the first few and make sure you lease it. Cause the moment that thing goes out of warranty, you're not going to want it on your hands. Here's the difference. If I may, and this is what I have learned from, from, um, the unplugged channel or electric channel unplugged with justice is there are less moving parts, less mechanical parts in an EV than there is in an ice vehicle. So perhaps, perhaps that means that some of the issues that, that Alfa Romeos have been known for in the past won't necessarily be an issue in their, in their electric vehicles. Okay. Um, now having said that, would I want to be that Guinea pig? Probably not. Okay. Um, but I will also say that I remember when the Julia first came out, I thought it was really a a good looking car. You actually went and test drove one. Um, You know, and and I was almost moved enough by what the Julia looked like and what it was offering to, I I actually considered one for about a half a second, but I considered (laughs) it, which was a half a second longer than I would have ever considered an Alfa Romeo in the past. Um, So I, I think to a certain degree that EVs will level the playing field as far as uh, mechanical issues and the lack thereof, because there's so many fewer parts, moving parts that we have to concern ourselves with. How about all that? Right. Potentially, potentially. Uh, look what happened from me spending all this time with justice. I, I almost sound like I know what the hell I'm talking about. Hey, you can get 25% off with our car buying help just by saying gold. 25. And dad, good news. You can also save 100 bucks on an extended warranty. Use gold 100. Offer ends at the end of the month. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, saving of the gold for everybody concerned. Another thing I saw today, and I sent it to you, is huh. General Motors has decided that they're no longer going to force people. Hey, hey, on- hey, hey, hey. That was going to be really got to be kidding me. Come on, man. Oh, okay. Well, then I won't say it. But but my point is, is that they're trying to figure out. <laughs> really? You, you got to be, be kidding, kidding me. They're, Their point they're trying, is. They're trying to figure out ways to reduce the 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 asking price of their vehicles because they know that they've pushed the limit to its max. And, and so they have to start coming back from those high-priced vehicles and start producing more affordable vehicles, if, if there is such a thing anymore. So let's take a peek at that, Pops. Yeah, you're right. If you remember, we called out GM because they added a forced subscription, a three-year subscription to OnStar on all Buick and GMC vehicles. It was $1,500. It was not an option. You just bought the car and the car came with the subscription. It was a really novel concept to increase subscription <laughs> attachment to 100% overnight. GM yes. has now walked that back. The really, you got to be kidding me here is the fact that they thought they could get away with it, Dad, especially as MSRP, base MSRPs have gone up so much. So much. This comes on the heels of Honda's decision to remove their entry-level trim, ultimately to a few months later bring it back. These are good signs for overall affordability. Well, uh, because I, it, it, it shouldn't, it, you, you should be able to see some of this stuff with your eyes closed if you're a manufacturer. I mean, at a certain point, you have to realize that you've priced way too many people out of the market for, for your new cars. And there is more competition today than ever. And, 
especially the competition that is uh, that that they're facing from Tesla uh, on the EV side of things. And trust me, these manufacturers need to sell ICE vehicles to underwrite their future plans. So. You can't stop selling cars, and if it means you have to stop producing just the high-end stuff and, and start producing affordable stuff, that's what they're going to do because they're going to need that income. Uh, you know, it's, and, and we see the, the, this, um, this, the sales volumes are, are, are not trending in the right direction, no. especially on the no. retail side of things for new cars. Um, and it's only going to get worse because interest rates continue to go up. So payments continue to go up. Um, so, yes, I, 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 my hope is that the manufacturers, um, even while they were asleep, saw the writing on the walls with their eyes closed, that it's time to go back to producing some more vehicles that, that the vast majority of Americans can buy. Hey, you said something that I found interesting. You said that car dealers are reactive. But Dad, yes. I don't know if you know it. Some automakers, they're actually quite proactive. And if it's okay with you, I'd like that to be our intro into. Really? You, you gotta, gotta be, be kidding, kidding me. Now, the automaker that I'm alluding to, Pops, that would be our friends over at Ford. See, they are not reactive. They are proactive when it comes to recalls and issues yeah. with their vehicles. They're just, they're, they're all for <laughs> it, Dad. I posted this on Twitter this morning, Ford, where quality is job number one, we now have 1.3 million Fusions and Lincoln MKZs being recalled from 2013 to 2018 model year. And Dad, the next tweet in the thread, I know you're a big Twitter thread kind of guy. Yeah. This is the oh, leaderboard, yeah. folks. We're going to be updating the leaderboard all year long. If you remember last year's NHTSA recall leaderboard, Ford won in a runaway. They really took number one on the podium last year. And so far, Dad Ford off to a strong start. Two million vehicles already <laughs> under recall in just 2023 recalls. Whoa. And may I and, and may I suggest that their new tagline is Ford where quality is job none. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's no one's job. No one really cares about it. Uh, we'll speak about it occasionally. We're, 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 we're going to say we're committed to it. Uh, and we're going to prove at every opportunity that we're really not. Um, yeah. and, and I know people get mad at me because I take shots at Ford all the time, but <sighs> there's, there's one thing that you don't want to be leading the league in. And that's recalls. And they lead the league in recalls every year. Now, you can you can extrapolate whatever you want out of that, okay? But, but it would indicate to me that they don't really pay that much attention to the quality, and they're not that, re that concerned about it. And their thinking is that there's enough Ford fans out there, even with recalls, even with the fact that so many Ford customers are on a first name basis with their service advisors because they see them so often, um, that they will continue to support the brand um, because they just they just love Ford and they just love their service advisor. They're like family. <laughs>